After a two-year relationship, not only is Carson acting like he doesn't know Claridge, he's also calling him a senile old man. Well, it's not so complicated, Trevor. This is what happens in a breakup. We've all been there. You meet somebody, you hit it off, you start getting really close, and then one of you says, hey, maybe I can be in your cabinet one day. And the next thing you know, you're picking out countries to invade together. Well, that makes a lot of sense, Jessica, but then why are they airing out all their dirty laundry in public? Oh, yeah, all it takes is one fight, and then he starts telling everyone that you don't know anything about the world and that you're helpless without him. And you're like, oh, yeah, really? Well, you never meant anything to me anyway. And technically, we weren't even together, so... <laughs> what? Jess, are we still talking about Ben Carson? Who the f is Ben Carson? Look, if Daryl... <laughs> look, if Daryl wanted to be an item, he should have just said so instead of just stringing me along with DiGiorno and Late Night Booty Blasting. And now he's on Facebook talking about how great it is to be single and how, for the first time, he really feels so free. And it's like, really, Daryl? Really? You feel free right now? You're just gonna DM my best friend three days after we break up, even after we did that stupid hike in the Catskills together? Dude, I did a three-mile hike with Daryl. Three miles. I had granola for lunch, and that's not even a <laughs> lunch. <laughs> you know what? Why don't you take a handful of that granola and then just shove it up your ass, bro? Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Okay. Bye. Okay. Th thank you, Jessica, for that report on Ben Carson. Jessica Williams, everyone. Because Republicans were running in all ages and colors, and Democrats just could not keep up. The lieutenant governor of Illinois is a Latina. Uh, she was running against a Democrat uh, who was just another white guy. And by the way, <laughs> that was definitely her opponent's mistake to make that his campaign slogan. <laughs> for more, we're joined by our senior demographer, Jessica Williams. Jessica, thank you so much for joining us. Uh, this, this, is, this is unbelievable. Yeah. This is unbelievable. Absolutely. Uh, Jessica, you, you would agree, last night Republicans gained at least seven Senate seats. They fielded some pretty diverse candidates. You, you, John, Republicans didn't just take Democrats' seats. They stole their essence. The GOP went from a Brooks Brothers catalog to a United Colors of Benetton ad. <laughs> it's not fair. I mean, how would Republicans feel if Democrats started denying climate change or decided that life begins at impure thoughts? No, I can understand that. <laughs> They would be angry. Yeah. They would be confused. Oh, absolutely. They would maybe be hurt. Exactly. But sorry, Democrats, because Utah just selected a young black congresswoman. Conservative Arkansas passed a minimum wage increase. What the f kind of bizarre world is this, John? <laughs> I mean, pretty soon the Republicans are going to be rocking those MSNBC nerd goggles. John, they are single white femaling the Democrats. So what do they do? What do they do when, when, when this happens? The Democratic Party has always been uh, about the identi identity politics, really, of the underrepresented. If Republicans take that, what do the Democrats have left? They need to dig deeper. Get the minorities within the minorities. Pansexual Whole Foods shoppers with dreadlocks. <laughs> Your Korean lesbian floor. So you know what? Maybe politics isn't the Democrats' thing anymore. They're great at social media and raising money, so why not become a tech startup and develop an app? Like AirDNC. It lets you say, it lets you stay in a Democrat's Washington home that's now vacant since they lost their jobs. You know, that, that boom. boom is, is, is right. It mm -hmm. hurts. Truth it hurts. Hurt, the truth hurts, mm -hmm. Jessica, and I'm glad that you delivered that and, and dropped what appeared to be a mic from your hand as Always. you did. Always. Boom. <laughs> let, me, let me say this. Uh -huh. Maybe Democrats need more people like yourself to motivate the base, to get the blood pump in there. Oh, yeah, I would do it, but I'm a Republican now. What? Hey, what? Yeah. Wait a minute. Yeah. You support Republican policy now. Well, no, but I do support me winning an Oscar playing the first black woman president in Road to the Ovary Office, the Mia Love story. That, that's, so this is it. It's over. Mm -hmm. It's over. It's over. The Republicans are the party of minorities now. Well, you know what? No, uh, it's like... When there's, like, this accountant guy at your office who, mm -hmm. like, keeps asking you out even right. though you know you have nothing in common, mm -hmm. but then, like, one night you see him at an exclusive party at the MoMA and he's with some cute alt girl with, like, pink hair and you're like, hey, you know what? Maybe I could date this guy, you know what I mean? And then you, like, talk to him again on Monday and you're like, oh, no, I was right. This guy <laughs> sucks. <laughs> it's just like that. <laughs> you know what? You know what I mean? So... so... Uh, so 2016 Democrats have a, a better shot at 
dating? Yeah. I mean, no. I mean, well, maybe. I don't know, John. I'm 25. Love is complicated. All right, thank you. <laughs> Jessica Williams, everybody. We'll be right back. It really is complicated. It's Science and technology have progressed by leaps and bounds. We now live in a world where robots, smartphones, and cronuts actually exist. And now, the ultimate invention is finally here. A real working hoverboard. The new hoverboard, the hoverboard. My childhood fantasy of riding one is about to come true as I meet with John Sayobatian, whose company actually invented a real life hoverboard called the IOHawk. Here it is. What the hell is that? It's the IOHawk. I'm sorry, is this supposed to be a hoverboard? Because it has two wheels. Um, yeah, this is what we got. This is basically just a Segway without the stick. This isn't the future, by the way. This is bull is what it is. But don't worry, there is a real hoverboard out there. I met with its inventor, Shane Chen. So, I hear that you have a hoverboard, and I know it's true because your product actually has the word hover in it. So, let's see this hover tracks. Uh, this is the kind of hover tracks. And then you stand on, you know, the full platform. It does have the word hover in there. So are there secret jets in there that just propel you forward and up, or is it just staying on the <laughs> ground? Stay on the ground. It's not really hovering, but it just it's a cool name. Do you also call uh, cars uh, street planes? You could for a cool name. Turns out there are all kinds of non-hovering hoverboards, and unbelievably, thousands of douchebags are buying them. Celebs from Kendall Jenner to Lil Wayne, Justin Bieber. And now there's actually lawsuits over who came up with this non-idea of a hoverboard first. I had an idea like four or five years ago. We gave them a warning, uh, show them the pattern. Then we have to file the lawsuit. I've had this idea since I was a kid. Everybody's had that idea since they were a kid. I came up with that idea when I was a kid. Yeah, just like all the other kids that saw Back to the Future, we all wanted to have a hoverboard of our own. So you saw the hoverboard and you were like, that's exactly what I'm not gonna make. No. Kind of. No. And then it just gets stupid. First of all, I didn't steal anything. And Shane's being sued by Segway. What? Were you never going to tell me about this Segway lawsuit? Well, I was going to tell you. They, they uh, sued us with a Segway pattern because they, you know. This is like a massive, gross, disgusting gangbang of hoverboard lawsuits, and none of them actually hover. What the f is going on? Everyone is suing everyone over a stupid board with wheels. I just want to live in a world where I can ride a freaking real hoverboard. There's only one Dr. Genius inventor who can help me. Doc, listen, we have to go back in time. With your time machine and 1.21 gigawatts, we can find whoever created these so-called hoverboards and find a way to make them less douchey and actually hover. There is no time machine. It's just a movie. What? I don't even know what a gigawatt is. Great Scott! What did you say? Nothing. But then the doc gave me an idea. Why not go to the future where a hoverboard might actually exist? You're right. Oh, thanks, Doc. I'm not Doc! <laughs> My name is Christopher. Ah. If I can't change the past, I can at least try to help change the future. All right, listen up. I am here for your future. I need for you to come up with an invention or an idea. You have to patent your ideas because in the future, there will be douchebag companies that will try and take your idea and claim that they got it first. What's a douchebag? Um, your teacher will explain it to you later. So let's get drawing. What do you have? Potato tree. A potato tree? Great. Patent that. Uh, magic genie creating a garbage land. I already thought of that idea. Let's think of a new one. Wait a minute. I know exactly what this is. This is what I've been waiting for. It's a hoverboard. Wait, but it's not even... And it's up to you to make this happen. Thank you, kids. You're all beautiful little geniuses. Yeah, but it's not a 
I know what it is. Make that happen, okay? I'll come back for you in the future. I now know a true hoverboard will one day exist. Until then. Keep it under six miles per hour. You want to drive? No, it's cool. People complain a lot about sexism these days, but thankfully there are those who know the truth. I'm not buying this inequality business, I'm not. Men and women are different, and we should celebrate that rather than claiming women are victims. If anything, it's not the women who are victims, it's the men. In this sort of feminized atmosphere in which we exist today, old-fashioned tough guys are in constant danger of slipping out and saying something that's going to get you in trouble and make you look like a sexist. Right. They are the ones in danger, but women actually have it great. Look at me. I've got a high-power job in New York, but I get benefits men will never see. Come spend a day in my fun world. Let's go. Now let's take my walk to work. For most guys, it's just a calm, boring commute. But for me, it's like I'm competing in a beauty pageant every day. Do men get super nice things said to them when they walk by an open construction site? Hola. Hola. How are you? I'm fine. How are you? Thanks. Or walking by a random security guard on his lunch break? I like your hair. Thank you. Yes, I do have nice hair, Mr. Rent-A-Cop. And if I don't want people talking to me when I walk to work, all I have to do is go four blocks north to avoid teenagers hanging out at the bodega, three blocks west to get around those creepy old guys playing dominoes, oh, and avoid Wall Street douches, white guys, Latino guys, black guys, Middle Eastern guys, really any men. And it only takes 55 minutes to get to work. And look at how much exercise I get. Hold on, hold on. Is that guy staring at my ass? Thanks, sir. That's sweet. Woo! Oh, how could any women possibly be bothered by this? Incredibly, I found one or two ladies who are. Thank you so much for sitting down with me. I really appreciate it. Whoa. <laughs> All right, ladies, let's hear it. I think it's 100% of the time that you have the vulnerability as you're a woman walking down the street. And I think that's the scary part for me. It's I never know how to respond. Should I respond? Is my safety compromised if I make a response, if I call them out? Your safety? Jeez, loosen up already. They mean it in a nice way, I think. Like, they find Most you the attractive. Time, yeah or they want to just pay a compliment. Now, when I was younger, I didn't like it. It used to bother me. I thought, like, oh, this is so sexist, blah, blah, blah. Now I'm like, if I don't, it doesn't happen, I'm like, excuse me. Exactly, you should be flattered. One time I was walking down the street and this man came up literally inches behind me and was like, I want to you in the What? A guy once said he wanted to on my tits and take a dump on my breasts. I'm so sorry that happened. Beautiful is fine, but bitch, I want to eat your that's a whole different story. And the sad thing is, that guy will probably be happy to tell you that story. But come on, how often does the gross stuff really happen? Where are some places on this map that you have been street harassed? South Bronx. Long Island City. Dumbo. Atlantic Park. Upper West Side. Oh, that leaves a lot of safe places. You'll be safe right around here. Actually, I've been harassed on one of those sightseeing cruises. Oh, for the love of God. Are you serious? Yes. Okay, fine, but whose fault is all this really anyway? I don't know that we can restrain boys from being boys, so the long stare, oh. the offhand comment, you have to, what do you do, excuse it? Because it was certainly provoked. Oh, right. What makes you think you can just go outside wearing a dress or pants or a red shirt? You can walk down the street in a burqa. You can walk down the street in a bikini. It doesn't matter. You're still gonna get harassed. If you make eye contact with anyone, it's like, oh, that was an invitation for you to say something or look at me too long. Whoa, whoa, make eye contact? Ladies, you're clearly not walking down the street the right way. Rule number one, always wear oversized headphones. Rule number two, master the fake phone call. Hello, Beyonce? <laughs> Rule number three, avoid eye contact at all costs. Keep your head down for the love of... Oh. And there's tons of other fun solutions too. My normal response is just put on my bitch face mm -hmm. and just walk straight ahead, completely ignore them. Do you guys all have a bitch face? 
Well, yeah, I don't want to mess with you. But if you really need to get somewhere, there are things you can do. You're a grand old flag. You're a high flying flag and forever in peace. Like act like a psycho. You're the emblem of. Or for real safety, all you have to do is get a travel buddy. The more, the better. Who lives in the Upper West Side? Let's go. Does anybody need to stop at a bodega on the way home? Does anybody live in Williamsburg? Anyone? We got two in Williamsburg. It seems we can only dream of the day when women can walk down the street and confidently say, Say it with me. Sir, it is not okay for you to say that you want to take a on my tits and a dump on my breasts. Also, that's redundant. After an impassioned Democratic primary between the Curb Your Enthusiasm guy and the Mother of Dragons, oh the voting is finally over. And with Hillary Clinton as their nominee, the Democratic Party has united without controversy. <laughs> JK, y'all, I'm with you. I won't vote for Hillary. I can't vote for her. We're not just automatically going to vote for the demon because you're saying the devil may be there. Demons and devils? How can it get any worse? I think there's one poll that showed one-fifth of Bernie Sanders supporters would actually vote for Donald Trump. Oh, yep, that's worse. So I gathered a bunch of actual loyal Bernie Sanders supporters together to see if this could possibly be true. Probably I will be looking at Trump. I'm going to have to go with Trump. Trump. Why? He has diarrhea of the mouth, but a lot of things that he says are things that a lot of people may think. You mean like racist things? Racist things, I would say, yeah. Okay. Um, he is a bigot and the racist. However, um, you don't have to continue with however. Where are you going to go with that? No, oh, well, I'm, I'm about to go there. Hillary has been a scam artist all her life, and I hope the FBI comes and indicts her. Hmm, I was starting to suspect that this wasn't about Trump at all. Hillary will bring us to war within 90 days of her inauguration. Okay. Hillary Clinton's just a stack of garbage. She's a, she's a stack of garbage. She's more like a leprechaun to me. You said she's a leprechaun? What has a leprechaun ever done to you? <laughs> uh, they disgust me. Okay, hold up. So they think Hillary is this. I want me go. But they want to vote for this? Money, money, I want more money. I want, I don't even know why. I don't get it. How do you go from a left-wing progressive like Bernie to a man who worships money only slightly less than he worships himself? Maybe I'm missing something. Can you name one thing that Donald Trump and Bernie Sanders have in common? Bernie and Donald do not have a super PAC. Actually, Donald Trump does have a super PAC, like four. Bernie and Trump both don't have hair. Wow, OK. Um, anything else? They're both old. Anything else? They both want to be president. And that's all it takes, huh? Can't they see that it's Bernie and Hillary that have similar policies and views? <clears throat> Their views are totally opposite. Hillary Clinton and Bernie Sanders' views are totally opposite? Right. What about Bernie Sanders and Donald Trump's views? OK. OK, what? <laughs> are they totally opposite? <laughs> Hell yeah. This is not a robot short-circuiting. These are real people who are going to vote. OK. To show them just how opposite Bernie and Trump are, I'm going to play a fun game called Who Yelled It Best, Donald Trump or Bernie Sanders? First one. When Mexico sends its people, they're bringing crime. They're rapists. And some, I assume, are good people. Trump. Trump. The goal of real health care reform must be high quality, universal coverage in a cost effective way. Bernie. Bernie. I would end Obamacare and replace it with something terrific. Trump. 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 What gave it away? The third grade level wording. OK. OK. You will never learn what I am thinking. That's Trump. Actually, no, that's Hitler. Sounds a little like Trump, doesn't it? Trick question. Mm-hmm. I got you. Like a leprechaun. <laughs> wow. Except for the Hitler thing. You guys did really, really well. You know why? They are literally the opposite people. It's not going to Donald Trump. It's going away from Hillary Clinton. OK. Maybe an analogy will help. Last weekend, I wanted to go to this new restaurant, but my friends wanted to go to this old restaurant, and I got outvoted. So instead of eating with them at this old restaurant, I went into an alley, and I sat down and ate a pile of dog <laughs> At least I know it's doo-doo. That plan backfired. Do these people just love doo-doo? I have to get to the bottom of this. Y'all would rather have a 100% turd than a maybe secret turd. Yeah. Yes. 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 But what if that maybe dookie turns out to just be 
okay and a little less progressive than Bernie Sanders. And I guess we'll have to chew on that. Well, I guess we'll just have to chew on that dookie. Uh, maybe there isn't a way to convince these six Bernie the Trump voters to change their minds. Luckily, there is one Bernie supporter who has his priorities in order. Are you going to vote for Hillary Clinton in November? Yes. Oh, snap. Go on. So there's zero chance you vote for Donald oh, Trump. Oh, God, please. I'm going to do everything I can to make sure that Donald Trump is defeated. Maybe Bernie supporters should just listen to the guy that they're supporting. Jay Willie, out. Jessica Williams, everybody. <laughs> Miss Jay Willie. Uh... What an exciting and yet sad moment mm -hmm. at the same time. Yep. <laughs> we, we tried. We tried to put together all of your greatest moments, but the truth is no one show can do them justice. You are the coolest, most awesome person. Uh, this building is going to suffer a severe lack of uh, Jay Williness mm -hmm. without mm -hmm. you. I got a lot of Willy style. <laughs> <laughs> and, um, and so, to say goodbye to you, we, we tried to put together just a tiny bit of uh, what makes you as amazing as you are. So please enjoy. Hey guys, it's TV's Jessica Williams. All the single ladies, all the single ladies, all the single ladies. Ah, ah, okay, okay, okay. See, that's racist. Brace yourself, you might want to sit down for this, but Beyonce is black. <laughs> Why would we need a tractor dancer on this farm? Because it's fun. Prop and lock it. Try this. Yep. Is that pioneer choking that Native American dude to death, or do I have something crazy in my eye? Oh, look at me. I, I'm an old exorcist. I don't know technology. What the f is going on? I just want to live in a world where I can ride a freaking real hoverboard. You want to kick out a church that is very homophobic and put in young LGBT youth? It'd be a perfect place for our young people to live. What? <laughs> Jessica Williams, everybody. <laughs> ah, wow. Um, uh, Jessica, I think I speak for everyone on the show, especially your fellow correspondents. Whoa, um, whoa, who... whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> Chill out, African. Oh, wow, it's all the correspondents, everybody. Oh, it's all the correspondents. <laughs> we can speak for ourselves. Yeah, I'll uh, go first because I'm the white guy. <laughs> Jess, it has been an honor working with you. When I came in, I was so impressed by how young and talented you were, it almost made me angry. <laughs> and now, as you leave, I'm honored to say that I am still pissed. <laughs> You've covered so many important stories about black women and gay rights and pastors who think that they're semen and Starbucks coffee. Right. <laughs> but before you go, Jess, there's one big reason we're all here today. Can I get your office? Can I get your office? Guys, 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 please, guys. It was so beautiful and you spoiled. You should be ashamed of yourselves. <laughs> I'm getting Jessica's office. Uh, <laughs> we're also going to put the tanning bed. No, Jessica, we, uh, wow. We cannot say goodbye to you enough. It is not goodbye, it is farewell. You're going to be close by, hopefully. Your <laughs> show is going to be amazing and you're always welcome. Jessica Williams, everybody. <laughs> <laughs>